I love Mark's gospel. The last several weeks we've been traveling in chapter one of Mark's gospel. And right out of the gate, when we hear in the first chapter, the first verse that Mark says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you say that? The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Gospel means good news. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And Mark, who's got the shortest of the gospels, it's sometimes called the businessman's gospel. Boom, 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 boom. There's just action right out of the gate. And Jesus shows right out of the gate the business he's about. He has brought his kingdom with him. After he is baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan, we hear that the heavens were opened and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And the voice came, you're my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Immediately, he goes into the desert and takes on Satan. It's the foreshadowing of the victory that Jesus would win on the cross over Satan's sin and death in the temptations in the desert where he trusts in the Father, perfect trust in the Father, guides him right through the temptations. And then he calls his disciples. We hear he calls Peter, James, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Then last week we heard of his first public demonstration of power as recorded by Mark. Does anybody remember what Jesus did? We read about last week. He drove out a demon, a fallen angel. He's preaching in the synagogue in Capernaum, and they say, whoa, this is a, like a new teaching. He teaches with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. It's when that phrase, he teaches with authority, it's ex usia in the Greek, out of his very being flows kingdom power. Out of his very being, Jesus Christ the King flows his kingdom, driving out what is not of his kingdom. So it, out of his very being, he is teaching and driving out demons. And then right after that, we get to today's gospel. And immediately, he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever, and immediately they told him of her. He came, took her by the hand, and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she served them. You can see as you watch Jesus in Mark chapter 1, as he receives the anointing, Jesus Christ means the anointed, Jesus the anointed, the Holy Spirit, and that's who we are too. Jesus, his flesh is anointed by the Holy Spirit. Christians are anointed ones. Do you say, I'm an anointed one? Ready? I'm an anointed one. That's real. That's something we want to live and walk in the anointing of God on our lives. And after he receives that, the flesh being anointed first squares up with Satan. You know, deals with that. Learn that I'm going to overcome the temptations of Satan again and again and again. And the scriptures tell us that Jesus, we do not have a high priest who's unaccustomed, unaccustomed with weakness, but who has been similarly tempted in every way. He understands. He put on this flesh. And then we see how does Jesus treat this fallen angelic realm that is called the demons. He's driving them out. If he drove them out, if he drove them out then, he wants to drive them out now. He wants you to be free, to know how beautiful you are, how loved you are, that the Lord looks at you and the light in his eyes, when he looks in your eyes, that's living. That's the best version of yourself is the one fully alive in him. Can you repeat that? The best version of yourself is the one fully alive in him. Whoa, one more time. The best version of yourself is the one fully alive in him. And to let Jesus walk the face of the earth through you, it works best if you're fully alive in him. It's a daily thing. Being a disciple, we run on grace. And he never runs out of grace. And then when it comes to healing, we see that Jesus loves to heal. And I've spoken about it a few times over the last few years here. There's three kinds of healing that I like to categorize. Where, where Jesus is, there is healing. And he brings spiritual healing. That's the best one. When we're forgiven of our sins, he, we know that he died on the cross to free us. When we slip and fall, we say, Lord, I'm sorry. And he doesn't get tired of forgiving and healing us. Spiritual healing, that's the biggest one that we're right with the Lord. And we're right when we get to the final moment and say, oh, I'm glad I believed. I'm glad I turned away from that stuff. I'm glad you saved me from that stuff. The second, physical healing. We believe in that. It's real. 
And then the third is societal healing, you know, social justice. And as we've entered into Black History Month, we had a beautiful celebration on Friday night with Keir Ward and Richard Lane. And we remember, especially in 2020, that we as disciples of Jesus, we help advance the kingdom. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. Would you say that? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we, in our sphere of influence, help to bring societal healing, social justice, by being a witness, God willing, to how we treat other people, the dignity of every man and woman, every race, race, and nation. That, you know, we're really blessed at Corpus Christi. We have a multicultural parish. Father Don, I've heard him talk about it many times, that this parish achieved something beautiful by the 80s. Back in the 80s, they had already had a beautiful, uh, raise your hand if you're a beautiful multicultural community. Raise your hand if you were here in the 80s at this parish. And you, so it's been, it's been part of the heritage of this parish for decades. It's, it's beautiful. And, you know, sometimes, like, you get used to something, right? And it, but we, we don't want to take for granted. We thank God that we have this beautiful multicultural parish. And this right here is a microcosm of what God wants for the world, a family of different race, nation. How many nations here? I don't know at this point. I lost count. There were 14 I heard at one point, but 28. 28? Sweet. Jesus, we love you, Lord. 28. That's amazing. How many nations are in the world? That's a question for another day. So, but it's a microcosm. It's beautiful. How nice that you can come into the church and get a microcosm of heaven's, a real experience of heaven, of unity and divine love in the glory of diversity. You want to say that? Unity and divine love in the glory of diversity. How beautiful, right? Praise God. And yet, I touch on this because the healing power of Jesus flows through his body. Would you just look at your hands and say, I'm his body. Come on. I'm his body. It's real. You are the body of Christ, and his healing love flows through us. Now, there's a key to accessing his healing love. And be encouraged, friends, like, it is so good to know that if I just put on the fruits of the Holy Spirit, you know, if I'm carrying the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and I triple dog dare you, write down the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The 12, it's drawn from the Latin, the Vulgate version of the scriptures. Galatians has nine recorded usually in the English version, but the Catholic Church denotes 12 traditional fruits of the Holy Spirit. And if you I just want to preach an hour today, but I won't. I want to go through each one of them. They're, they, are, they are a participation in the presence of God. Can you say that? Participation in the presence of God. Oh, that's why you're here, right? Maria, did you ever get bored? Did you get bored yet with church today? Come on, Maria. Praise the Lord. All right. But she's like, I'm in the front row, buddy. I even use this. She's like, I even use this yellow cord as a seatbelt when things get going. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A participation in the presence of God. And when you have those fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's a participation in the presence of God. When you, you're carrying that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and underrated but very important, chastity. This good stuff. That's a participation in the presence of God. And you're, that alone, as you are loving and kind in your sphere of influence, treating every person with dignity is bringing God's realm, the kingdom, king's domain, king's realm, the kingdom of God is at hand because there's a disciple participating in the presence of God, manifesting the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and that's going to do something to the atmosphere. You with me? Amen? Amen. Let's get to the key. I love these healings. I love these things. I love to see healing. I teach on Monday nights at a school called Encounter School of Ministry, and I'm a year one instructor, and we really focus in those 32 classes in year one, 64 sessions on identity, who we are, and on prophecy, hearing the voice of the Lord, on healing, being able to pray for physical healing, because he said, you'll lay your hands on the sick and they'll recover, and inner healing, really important stuff. So I, I love to see the healing power of Jesus unfold. A woman just last Monday said, I saw my first healing, my first full healing. She was driving her mom to the hospital on her 72nd birthday, and her mom's moaning in pain. The daughter's name is Jennifer. 
Mom is moaning in pain as she's driving her to the hospital. And they say, we've got to stop at home and get mom's medicine or something. They stop at home. And she's like, I'm going to try what I'm learning in my school. And she goes to pray for her mom, who's admittedly a little skeptical of this, you know. And she prays for her mom. And her mom says, your hand is so hot right now. And her mom, she had all this like back pain, I guess, right there. Like she's moaning in the car. And her mom, God gave her a special birthday gift, instantly healed and delivered, hospital trip canceled. Isn't that awesome? Completely gone. So I, I just had to get into a physical healing story first. You want to give God a hand for healing? Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And yet, friends, the line today, where it all flows from, the fruits of the Holy Spirit that we get to carry because we have a participation in the presence of God, the spiritual healings, the physical healings, societal healing, where it all flows from, we hear in today's gospel. Jesus is our model. We imitate Christ. We, we share in the life of Christ. We're his body, and he teaches us. What did he do after that huge night of healing? Did you hear that? That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered together about the door. The whole town knew we need his touch. Man, that'd be a great problem for a church to have. You know, like the whole city at the door. Wow. Do it, Lord. Do it. Do it. Greg, Greg, can figure, Greg and Carolyn and Miriam can figure out the traffic. We can do it, Lord. Can I get an amen, Greg, Carolyn, and Miriam? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus, we love you. But yet, after that glorious night of healing, all these deliverances and healings, this is the key for our lives to manifest his presence and his power right here. And in the morning, a great while before day, he rose and went out to a, low, a deserted place, and there he prayed. And in the morning, a great while before day, he rose and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Why on earth does Jesus need to pray? He is God. And it reminds us of the true definition of prayer, conversation with God. Jesus loves to be with the Father, loves to be with the Spirit, loves the communion, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's in that place of prayer where conversation happens. Prayer is conversation with God. Would you say it? Prayer is conversation with God. And I just want to tell you about an awesome Christmas gift I got. We were giving this book out, and I want to share this with you. We have a few copies left on the table. I heard God laugh. This book turned out to be a huge shot in the arm in my prayer life, and I thought, I'm going to share this with them, this model. I went on retreat, and I said, I'm going to do that thing that Jesus did. I'm going to get up way before the dawn. So I, I made sure to get the coffee pot loaded before I went to bed. So you just had to eh, hit the button. And I got up early each morning on retreat before the sun, while it was still dark. And I sat there and I just watched the sun rise and prayed. And it was so powerful. And this book, this model on page 41, I didn't get permission this week to reproduce extra copies of it from Dynamic Catholic. But if you go to our website, click on catholic.com, you can just forward and listen to this portion of the homily. Just go to Renewal of the Mind. It leads you to our YouTube channel. And you can just go to this portion and write down the seven steps if you want. There are a few copies back there. This book carries a special grace that I would say is this. It facilitates conversation with Jesus. It facilitates conversation with Jesus. When's the last time you asked Jesus a question and listened to his answer? Don't worry, I'm in line with you. Like, we all have moments. We all have... Come on, baby. Praise the Lord. We all, that's a boldness. We love holy boldness. We all have our moments where we're just like, I do need to listen to the Lord more. Can I get an amen? We all have those moments. And I would recommend to everybody this seven-step prayer process. It's not a formula like the cake is baked. It is a formula that offers tips that helps facilitate the dialogue with Jesus. And I just started using it. I said, this is powerful, man. So here it is. There's a short acronym I use. GASP. Oh, GASP. Oh, that's easy to remember. GASP. And the other is FOF. Good luck remembering that. No, F-O-F. -F. That's not good teaching, is it, Steve? <laughs> good luck. No, FOF. F-O-F. -F. So GASP, FOF. GASP, FOF. So 
The scriptures say we will speak in new languages, y'all. Gasp, fall. Oh, he's lost his marble. Somebody called a bishop. Somebody get him out of here. All right, here we go. So those are the seven, the the first letters. Gasp, fall. Here we go. I'm going to run through them. And I really encourage you, it's the holy homework. Do it. He challenges everybody. Take 10 minutes a day for 21 days. And honestly, friends, like, this has consumed my holy hour. Just the whole, just the, it's been a shot in the arm for fresh dialogue, getting in that habit of talking and listening to the Lord. Sometimes it helps to take an empty chair and set it across from you, or just sit. But the key is to listen in your thoughts. When you ask the question, to listen back. So here we go. We're going to run through it. Gasp, thaw. Can you say it? Gasp, thaw. You got it. First step, gratitude. Gratitude. So we start, the scriptures are full, especially the Psalms of praise and thank God. Bless the Lord unceasingly. Remember all the works he has done in your life. We start by just thanking the Lord. Matthew Kelly, the author, says, begin by thanking God in a personal dialogue for whatever you are most grateful for. And it's good to stop and listen. The personal dialogue, Jesus loves to bless you. And as you recount a certain blessing he gave you, rejoice in it with him. You've given the gift to somebody before and you can't wait to see their joy. And the Lord loves that in your life as well. Like, yeah, I really, I really am happy that that is, that you received that beautiful gift. Like John and I, we've been making this little radio program. We want to evangelize digitally, locally and beyond. And we just got the blessing of a group called Spirit Filled Media in California picking up our little radio program. And I was just thanking the Lord for it. And the Lord's like, yeah, I know you want to evangelize locally and beyond. And use the airwaves. Why not? There's a lot of stuff on the airwaves. Maybe fill them. But letting the Lord delight. I love to bless you. So great gratitude. Start by thanking him for what you're grateful for in dialogue. Let him share his joy with you about how he's blessed you. It just stirs more gratitude. Gasp, foth. The second is awareness. This is where it gets really cooking in my experience. The awareness is revisit the times in the past 24 hours when you were and were not the best version of yourself. Remember, the best version is the one that's fully alive in Christ. And when you say, Lord, show me where I wasn't the best version of myself, he'll bring it up, and then you ask him, what do you want me to learn? And talk to him about it. You get so encouraged. Remember, his voice is upbuilding, consoling, encouraging, and loving. He's going to pick you up and give you wisdom. You say, all right, I blew that part. Thank you for teaching me. I'll be ready next time, God willing. And you ask him in awareness, when was I the best version of myself? And let him show you a moment where you were fully alive in the Lord. And thank him and rejoice. What do you want me to learn from that? Gasp, foth. Gratitude, the second, is awareness. The third is a significant moment. You ask the Lord, show me something significant today that you want me to revisit. An event, a moment. Show me, Lord, something significant today. He brings it up and you ask him again. What do you want me to learn from that? And he loves to talk to us. He's going to share with you wisdom from his being. Remember, he teaches ex usio, out of his very being into your being. He's going to impart grace. Every time he speaks, there's grace. His life runs on it. In his presence as disciples, gasp, foth. Gratitude, awareness, significant moments, peace. Who likes peace? Peace. Oh, glory to God. And he says, Matthew Kelly, this is so good. Ask the Lord to forgive you of any wrongs you've committed. That's good. Sin goofs us up, man. That's saying it lightly. Ask the Lord for forgiveness of sin, and then ask him to fill you with his abiding peace. It's so powerful. You just rest. Lord, please, fill me with your peace. Fill me with your peace. Peace is a powerful thing to carry. The peace of God, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And we carry his peace. And it can just bring a different element into a room, a work situation, a family dynamic that changes things. The peace of the Lord. So gasp. The fourth one is peace. Ask him to forgive you of any wrongs and ask him to fill you with his peace. And wait for it. Just rest and let him fill you with that peace. Gasp, foth. A few more to go. Freedom. This one's really good. The fifth one, speak with God about how he is inviting you to change your life so that you can experience the freedom to be the best version of yourself. This thing is intro, like, you know, it's incisive. It's like inviting the Lord to cut me. (laughs) Prune prune my heart, Lord. It's a simple question. 
for freedom. It's so good. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the, say it with me. Come on, we're almost done. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And when we say, Lord, what do you want me to change to be the best version of myself? And just let him bring it up. And know that when he brings it up, the grace is there to really move the needle in that area. It might be something big. So, okay, I'm gonna, I know you're going to move the needle today. It might not be perfect yet, but we're going to keep moving in that direction. Be encouraged. Remember, his voice is so encouraging, consoling, upbuilding, and loving. And then, friends, the O, others. Gasp, thaw, others. Pour out intercessory prayer. Who in your life needs intercessory prayer? And I have found when I'm praying for people that the Lord will put words on my heart for them. Like, send this YouTube link to your brother. Hey, Adam, check these scriptures out, dude. So we want to stay sensitive, tender, because it all takes place in dialogue. And when you're praying for your mom, the Lord might tell you, this is for everybody. The Lord might tell you, hey, I want you to give her a hug and tell her she's doing a great job. It's cool. Gasp, fob. Last one, finish with the Our Father. It goes back to that relationship that led Jesus early in the morning before the dawn to go sit with his father and talk. And that's what we do. We get to go and be with the Lord and receive from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in dialogue, revelation through conversation that brings transformation by the power of grace. When he speaks, he imparts grace. Say it with me, last one. When he speaks, he imparts grace. So if you're bored, no, you're not bored. If you get bored, though, just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Set a new fire in my heart for prayer. Set a new heart, fire in my heart for prayer. Last thing, when you do this, I recommend you do it every morning. Start with 10 minutes every day. Get up, brew that coffee. Because if you anchor your heart, if you anchor your attention and affection on God in the morning, if you hear his voice in the morning, it makes it easier to go back to that place throughout the day, to stay in touch. Get anchored in attention and affection on God in the morning. After my retreat, man, I came back and I just kept getting up early, like before my alarm, like early. And it's good to pray when you go to bed. Lord, speak to me in my dreams. Speak to me in my dreams. Minister to my heart and send me on mission. God can do stuff while you're sleeping. And sometimes you, you've probably had this experience. You wake up and you're praying. You ever woke up praying? You, like you're saying something? It's amazing. The other day, I woke up so early and and I, I, was, I said to the Lord, I woke up as I was saying, I want to grow in holiness. <laughs> and I wasn't like, I don't have anything crazy going on. It's just a heart's desire. This holiness is love, being in love with God. I want to grow in holiness. And I heard back as clear as a bell right here. That's why I'm waking you up early. Brothers and sisters, I just pray that grace over each of us. That each of us would begin to say to Jesus, teach me to pray like the apostles. Teach me to pray. And that we would Put in the time. Get up, get up and get anchored with attention and affection in God's presence in that intimate union of prayer in the morning. That we'd even pick up this formula on page 41 and enter into this dialogue with the Lord. And through this encounter with the Lord, we'd get filled with the grace that lets us manifest his presence through the fruits of the Holy Spirit so we can bring spiritual healing. We can bring physical healing. And yes, we can bring societal healing because we walk by the laws of another land called the kingdom of heaven. And because we make it a point to get up and get there every morning and be in his presence, we're able to bring it. Bring it, Lord. Bring it. We don't want to live lukewarm or mediocre. We want to have kingdom impact, and we believe with all of our heart that kingdom impact starts in intimacy. Please give us the grace as we receive the Eucharist now, Lord, to have fire in our hearts for kingdom intimacy and the discipline to get up and do it every day. Amen.